today is day 259 of the year of streaming and learning to code. We are continuing on here at Free Code Camp. Let's shimmy out of OBS into Free Code Camp, and we are on to something or other. We are trying to solve what's today's challenge. Wherefore art thou? Okay. Let's do a quick rundown. We've got chat on our phone up and running. We have audio, webcam. I think we're set. Cool. Okay, from the top. Wherefore art thou? Make a function that looks through an array of objects first argument and returns an array of objects that might have matching property and value pairs second argument. Each property and value pair of the source object has to be present in the object from the collection if it is to be included in the array returned what now? What, what, what? For example, if the first argument is first, Romeo, last, Montague, first, Mercutio, last, null, first, Tybalt, Tybalt, last, Capulet, and the second argument is last, Capulet, then you must return the third object from the array the first argument because it contains the property and its value that was passed on as a second argument okay so who's doing what now remember you use read search ask global object here's some helpful links has own property object keys let's open all of those Ideally, I feel like this should be straightforward and simple. However, I get the feeling we're going to fail quite miserably. Just some general foreshadowing based off the last 258 days of previously collected data. Uh, what is in a name? First, Romeo. Last, Montague. First, Mercutio. Last, Null. First. Tybalt, Tybalt, I'm drawing a blank. It's been quite some time since I've had to go through the characters of Romeo and Juliet. Is it a, is it just Tybalt? I'm pretty sure it's Tybalt. Just Tybalt. Last, not, not, not a hard Y. Or I sound. Definitely not, definitely not. Last Capulet, last Capulet should return first. Tybalt, last Capulet, why? Because something. A1, 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 B2, A1 should return A1, 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 B2. I don't understand. What's in a name? <laughs> A1, B2, A1, A1, B2, C2, A1, B2, should return A1, B2, A1, B2, C2. Why, why, why? This only has an A. This has both A and B, and this has all three A, B, and C. This is the last one that we're supposed to return A and B, and we're supposed to return any sets with A and B. Ergo, the first one that has A and B, the second set doesn't have B, and the third set, although it includes C, has both A and B. So that's, that's what's going down. I think that's the issue. That's the name of the game right there. Okay. So it's if it possesses that character, it should return it. All right. 
fair enough. Function. What's in a name? We have our collection and then the source, what we're hunting for. What's in a name? Variable array. Blah. Oh, frack. Well, that's fine. We've got these. Something about global arrays and values and stuff and such. So we'll get there. We will get there. The things we want in the meantime. Object, blah, 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 blah. Wrap it in stuff and make things with it. Yay, JavaScript objects. Okay, good enough. Nothing critical or new there per se. Has own property as a once over. Method returns a Boolean indicating whether the object has the specified property as own, not inherited property. Object has own property. Prop, the string name symbol of the proprietary property. One of those, not proprietary. It's after midnight and we're already confused and sleepy. Uh, property to test, return value. Boolean indicating whether or not the object has the specified property. Okay, yes, yes, good, good. What are, what are their fun examples they can show us that can open our eyes into the unknown secrets that has own property holds within its depths? Perhaps there's nothing new. Has own property. Blah, 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 blah. Buzz, fog, and stack. For variable in name. For variable name in buzz. If buzz has own property name. Console log. This is fog. Name. For sure, value plus blank. I don't get it. I don't get it. In general, I know it's identifying that it's there because it has fog, but it just it doesn't feel good. Object keys. Now, we used key value pairs in our last... Last Kata. Maybe we could reference that again. Not Kata. Last challenge. D D D D D D D D. Variable A B C. Blah blah blah. Array like object. Zero A one B two C. Console log. Object keys object keys object array like object random key ordering 100 2 and 7 an object blankety blankety blank an object returns all of its values get foo is a property which isn't Enumerable. Okay, let's uh, let's pretend we know what we're doing. It's worked for the last two hundred and fifty nine days mostly. To break new ground, only change code below this line, and only change code above this line. This shall henceforth be our domain collection we want to take collection and return array if or for let's do a for loop let's actually do the same let's do a for in loop like we had yesterday how weird would that be for variable
collection? Maybe. No. Four. Four variable key. In. Collection. Four variable key in collection if key has own property? That seems messy. Out of the gates. I already feel like that's going to end up in tears. Uh... We can and should check yesterday's code, because I think it would be extremely beneficial. But before we do that, before we do that, just stick it out a little bit longer. Has own property. Object dot keys. Did we already look at dot keys? We did. Die object dot blah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Keys array. Keys object. Why do I not believe them? Okay, okay. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. We're, we're going to figure this out. <laughs> Global object. We're putting something in array because we're returning array. How do we take the data we want? For example, the first argument is first, last... First and last and first and last. The second argument is last. Then you must return the third object from the array. The first argument. Yeah, one, two, and three. Return that third object from the array, which is the first array, or the first argument, because it contains the property and its value. That was passed on as the second argument. Well, it was a part of the second argument. So we want to push. Is it wrong to push? I feel like we should push. I think we're going to have our for key in collection, our for loop, our if statement, Something else is going to be happening here, uh, and then something is going to be pushed. That's just gut reaction array dot push something or other. Push source key push push. Uh, the first one, ooh, oh, sack of death, uh, collection key, collection key. Is that a thing? Do people do that? Collection <laughs> This feels, it's either collection key or it's in brackets or It's just key. One of those. I'd like to think it's collection key. Might be redundant. Could probably just get away with key in the parentheses, but I think collection key is a bit more specific. Better vis uh, visualization. Now, for me to have collection, to go from four variable key in collection and to push it here, our if statement 
the condition of her if statement needs to be checking for the following. If, so for each key, blah, 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 in collection, that first array, if we want to push the key that matches up has own property. You know, I almost want to say it's source if source dot has own property for key is what is it equivalent to not not equivalent to negative one is that a thing do people do that I would so love for this to just be the answer. That would be super freaking cool. Keys has own property. It returns a negative one, or they like laugh in your face, or they mail you an angry letter if it, it uh, doesn't check out. Right? Has own property method returns a Boolean indicating whether the object has the specified property or not. String name symbol, boolean indicating whether or not blankety blankety blank, every object, so forth, and stuff and such. Following example determines whether the O object contains a property named prop O, new object, o.prop exists. Function change o new prop, o prop, delete o prop, o has own prop returns true, o or has own prop returns false. So maybe I don't even need anything. Maybe I can just have that and we don't. What am I thinking of? It's index of. It's index of that returns a negative one. That's what it is. So this, this is full of stupid. Don't mind that. That was index of I was thinking of. Bad, Stephen. Here, since it just returns a Boolean value of true or false, if it is true, inherently just by having this crammed in here, it will run accordingly. Is this what we actually want? Let's go ahead and run it. Okay, cool. Empty, empty array, and... uh. And they seem mostly pissed, so that's cool. We can live with that. Frustration and bunch of red X's. We are no stranger to failure here on this stream. So what do we want to do from here? Hey, Null 513. Brilliant. Need some help with JavaScript. Uh, from from you, JavaScript Grandmaster. Null here, you're always too kind. Uh we are in the midst of struggling yet again, yet again. Hopefully you're, God, what day is it, Saturday? No, we're 20 minutes into Sunday. Well, technically we don't, we don't really recall. Uh, but for wherever you are, we're, we're currently 19 minutes into Sunday. It is 0, 19. And we are on the hunt for something. Why didn't it like this? Who knows? Variable for key in collection. You know what? Maybe we wanted a value. For Variable key in, I think we set it up wrong. 
We definitely set it up wrong. We can check what we had for yesterday's. I think now's a good point to simply reference. what we had going on yesterday. Now, yesterday, we have our list of key value pairs, very similar to our current array of key value pairs, mostly. Not identical, but as close as it's going to get for now. So we've got that. And we will be checking four keys in list, right? So we are checking four keys in collection. Eh, see that? See what we did there? Collection. Looking for keys in collection. Fingers crossed. We'll be able to put the, uh, put the flames that are burning the city down out momentarily. No 513, your happiness and perseverance is admirable. Well, thank you, 513. Stiff upper lip and all that jazz, right? The trick isn't to successfully swim, it's just to not drown. So, we're probably aiming lower than most, but we're just trying to survive. Swimming gracefully is overrated. We are looking for something. Ah, we were going through our for loop stuff. You know what we should do? Variable value equals list key. Hmm. Perhaps we should make variable array equal the list key. And then we can continue on with a damn near the same type of thing if value does not equal source, then we can do other crap with it. And instead of value does not equal, we can do has own property. Eh? Eh? Yeah. Let's try that on for size. This is going to get weird and messy, but that's how we like it. Go time from the top. Something about keys. Let's go ahead and make uh, array equal. Was it? It was list key collection list K. What did we do yesterday? List key. So now we will do collection key. Collection key. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh yeah. The confusion is endless. I love it. Now, onwards. <laughs> uh, Langley UK, do you accept help or do you want to find the solution yourself? We definitely accept help. If we didn't accept help, we would still be stuck on day one. Yeah, it's, it's brutal. But yeah, go for it. Help, help your heart out. We take tips and tricks and recommendations, whatever you got to spare. We can use it. In general, we still try to forge our own path, but we uh, we suck long time, so that's <laughs> help is needed. Help is needed. Uh, anyways, we are continuing on trying to salvage our code from yesterday to MacGyver it into today's solution. Now, if we make array equal that, we set up an if statement, screw the type of, let's just do has own property. You think that'll work? If source dot has own property array. I like that. I like that. If source has own property array. Oh, God, this is going to end in tears. Um, four, blankety blank, push equals, no, 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 this is bad, bad statement. 
bad, Stephen. Result. We want to return this. Not quite what we want. We want result plus equals... So, hmm, not source. No, we do want it to equal the key because they want us to take, they want us to compare source to collection and return the bit from, from collection that makes sense. Again, our, our favorite one so far that they had was, oh, that's awful to look at, but nevertheless... <laughs> We have, ah, it was this one, A1 and B1. That's one set. Second is A1 by itself. And then here we have A1, B2, and C2. All one nice, happy family. And then we've got a third or fourth A and C. We're supposed to, oh, this is the second set, A and C. So it's supposed to return, what the deuce? Oh, no, I confused myself. I was thinking of this one, where it's supposed to return A and B and A, B, and C. Here we have A and B, here we have just A, and then we have A, B, and C. These first three... are the collection. The source that we're looking for is A and B. So we're returning A and B, the first set here, and then since we're looking for things with both A and B, this is missing B, and this still has A and B. It also has a friendly C tagging along, but that's not the point. It has both A and B. So it's those two that we're on the hunt for. Not the prettiest example, but that's the example that we were able to piece together. Uh, D D D D D D D D. V. Langley UK. The collection is an array, not an object. So key is first Romeo, last Montague, etc. Okay, fair enough. I can come to terms with that. Null 513, he also takes money also. Eventually, we'll get to that. Uh, Langley UK. So, source dot has own property key has turned into source has own property first Romeo, last Montague which I don't think you intended. Not entirely. Not entirely. We're trying to fix that bit. We're trying to compare it to what? Well, we do want to compare it to source, which is the last bit of the array. It's this last. We'll zoom in once more. Romeo, Montague. Then the next bit. Mercutio, Null, followed by Tybalt and Capulet. That is the collection. Our source is last Capulet. The only thing that has last and Capulet is the third index, technically two, if zero indexed, that has Capulet. So what gets returned is the whole thing, though, first and last, like so. Ta-da! So what am I looking for? I'm looking source has own property if it matches up with, 
is it source or is it collection? I guess it's if it's collection has source. If collection has source. Collection key? Collection key value. Maybe it's collection key value. Maybe there's more to it. What if it's not that? So maybe we want collection has source push collection key. Holy shit. Guys, I returned something. I'm shocked. I... I don't know what else is supposed to be happening. All I have to say is that it it seems like now maybe I'm reading way too much into it. But see this bit? We've got the curly braces and that's here which is totally cool. Curly braces are awesome. This is just the curly braces. But the answer has the brackets. Do they actually want to see the bracket portion outside of the curly braces here in the answer? I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can be that guy. I think the best I can do is this. Uh, I, I wish I knew if I could confirm whether they wanted the bracket stuff on the outside. I mean, here, Array has it, and we're returning Array. Array push blah. Right? Right? Why? Why isn't there happiness? I feel like... The skies should have opened up by now, and champagne should be falling from the heavens. What is... I broke it. They're pissed. God's pissed again. Um... Langley UK. Okay. Actually, I'm wrong. Key is actually index, i.e. 0, 1, 2. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I see that. Yeah, uh, this would be 0. This would be 1. This would be 3. Uh, this is its own source, which would also be 0 in its own right. Uh, for the second parameter. And here, we're returning 2. I mean, it's 0, 1, and 2. We're all there. This would be 0 for its own bit, and we're returning 2, which is the third element of the index, 0 index, but yeah, good, good times. So, this though, shouldn't there, I, I feel like this should be success. I'm legitimately concerned hmm let's see what would i do differently what could i check for i can look for this like so copy and see and let's shove this right here boom beautiful okay and uh run it Okay, we're missing a piece. Fair enough. So, sack of death. It should be returning A1, 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 and B2. Or no, no, no. It should be returning A1 and B2, which is what we have, but it also needs A1, B2, and C2. If blankety blankety blank push
array equals maybe we don't need this bit okay and that just pissed them off fair enough dumb idea steven bad steven what about plus equals that would be kind of cool Nope, nope, they're still pissed. Rightfully so. What if it's this? Similar to our answer yesterday, result plus equals key. What if we just do array plus equals key yeah you know it's just a simple stripped down version damn 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 oh oh langley uk okay okay read the link to has own property check line nine gotcha gotcha okay let's do man z let's fix some of the stuff we destroyed b to d d b da d i l e to d d d d d d uh the link to has own property and and you say check line 9 line 9 if collection has own property source if it has source if it has source push blah we'll have to come back to that uh you said check has own property all right story time from the top the has own property method returns a boolean indicating whether the object has specified uh, has the specified property as own, not inherited property. So it hasn't inherited it. It has to have its own. Maybe that's causing issues when we go to push stuff to it. Or the equals. Anyways, let's continue on. So, not inherited. Object has own property prop. The string name or symbol of the property to test return value a boolean indicating whether or not the object has the specified property as own property. Description. Every object descended from object inherits the has own property method. This method can be used to determine whether an object has the specified property as a direct property of that object unlike the in operator this method does not check down the object's prototype chain using has own property to test for property existence the following example determines whether the o object contains a property named prop o prop equals exist function changed zero O new prop equals O prop, delete O prop, has own prop blank blank, change O, has own property returns false. Still confused. Let's go back. Let's go back. Hold on. Hold on. Langley. Is source a string? is source oh no source is not a well this part's a string all of it's an object it's a key value pair it's an object as a whole it's value the the value of the key is a string the capulet portion but it's also hunting by the last in Capulet. So it's not looking just for first. 
it's looking for last, but Capulet as well. So that's different than the string name or the symbol to test. So I need to change source to something else. We just need to tweak instead of variable key in collection, maybe we should also have variable key in, no, variable value, variable value in something, value in source. Value in source, value in source, which is very similar to this, right? Right? We've got value here, type of. So yesterday, we were checking our key value pairs in list. Different from number, number was coming in. Yesterday, we were converting numbers to Roman numerals. For key in list, value equals list key. So that's what's going on there. So we need to change that. This is the bit we want to work with. Value. But for source. Value but for source. So value source variable value do something or other value We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Believe in Langley. For variable key in collection. Value. If collection has own property. What if we don't need that? What if we change it to something altogether entirely different? Push value. Okay. What if we set up another for loop? I don't think another for loop is going to help, but I'm just confused and sad and don't know what to do now. Source. For value in the source. What if we get rid of that? And here we can have, no, oh, let's delete that. Four. D 
Uh huh. Uh huh. But now, now instead, we are looking for. We're looking for uh, key or value. We're looking for both. Collection. He has property value, array push value, damn, damn, damn. I think I broke it. I think I was much closer before, and now, now I've ruined my code. Bad Steven. Bad Steven. Okay, so to fix that, we should do the following. Google the crap out of it and see what we come up with. Who likes that plan? I think I do. Wherefore art thou? Return the third object from the array. Yeah, yeah, let's let's look for this. On the hunt. Hey Google. D D D D D D D D D D D Good, good. Let's see what we end up with here. We're going to make a function that looks through an array of objects. First argument returns an array of objects, matching property, and value pairs. Second argu uh, argument, each property and value pair of the source object have to be... Okay, great, great, great. So, first example, Romeo, Montague, blah, 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 blah. Spectacular. Second amendment blankety blank, blah, blah, blah. So far, this is what I've tried, but either get nothing in my new array or the object is pushed in. We had, oh, he's got a regular for loop too. I can have both name in source. So we could have a value in source, which is basically what we have, and then we can do a regular for loop. Has own property blah. Well, maybe this this dude got it wrong, so we probably shouldn't follow his example. But nevertheless, two solutions: log dash stuff and such. Oh wow! Filter array last Capulet. That is impressive. Kinda cool. Not gonna lie. Extremely effective. Far less complicated than I was thinking it needed to be. Oh, and array dot filter again. If I understood correctly, want something like this. Variable source. Last capulet. Variable array. Blankety blankety blah. Variable new array, which we can push to, mostly. Look, we've already got this guy here, variable array, just kind of patiently waiting there. Array.filter. Function item if object keys source... Every function k return source has own property k and item has own property k. Wow, another and. Double anding. And source k equals item k. Quite the laundry list to check. Return item. Console log blah. That is one way of doing it. I have two possible solutions. Could use a native function filter. Let's see what this dude had to offer. Or use a library such as load dash with the 
hyphen dot filter function. Oh, that's a thing. Interessante. You know, let's go ahead and check and see what we have here in there. Filter. Oh, oh, literally filter. My bad. Bad, Stephen. Wait a second. Hold on. Hold on. If we're just doing filter, then what would we do? It will return anything that has that, right? Anything that has that. Ten greater than blah. Non. Blankety blankety blank. Let's try that, shall we? I think. Where did the stuff and such go? French. We can translate it from French. Oh my god, you're there right. It is totally in French. That didn't even register when I was looking at it. Just all the words I saw return and other things, console log. Didn't look French at all, but now, now that I now that I can see it, yeah, that's we are in a different part of the world right now. We are indeed in a different part of the world. Rightfully so. So what should we change? We should alter the following based off the res array last blankety blankety blank did um did um did la da 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 what is different here from our answer? Variable new array equals the following. Array dot filter. We want it to be collection dot filter let's try that on for size collection dot filter right isn't it a whole thing like this like it's a Filter is a whole song and dance. Collection dot filter blah. Does it mean to be a variable? I feel like it does. I just don't know what to call it. Variable. Variable something. We'll worry about the name later. Names are overrated. A rose by any other name. See how that's that's applicable to the uh, to the theme at hand for today's challenge. If object dot keys source. If object dot keys source. What what what? Oh, literally object dot keys. I thought that was just like a fun generic name. I had no idea. Object.keys is literally the actual tool to be used. Oh, uh, who knew? I thought object was just a generic placeholder. Like variable i or j or cat, you know? No, it's a thing. It's like dot prototype. Prototype isn't just there for fun. 
It's meant to be used. So object dot keys. That's really interesting. See, as we look at it here, object dot keys source every function k. The ev what what is this, the every function? Oh, that's every as in the what's it called? Right. We know where every is. We we know what every is. It's checking every single one of them. Of course, we can't find it right now because we're an idiot. But uh, we've we've encountered every methods properties. Bad Steven. Bad Steven. Hey, Yagami uh, Asakura. Asakura. Which one are we doing? We are uh, first off. Hey, how are you? Welcome uh, back. That is. We are doing Wherefore Art Thou here at Free Code Camp. The f uh, fourth one under the Intermediate Algorithm Scripting section. Wherefore Art Thou. That is us. That is where we are at. Dee -dee -dee, bee -bee -dee. We've been struggling for a bit, so we've outsourced our answers. We are near the end. I, I think so. We're just trying to wrap our head around the, uh, the answers that we've come across. So, object key source. Every if. Let's go ahead and set this up bit by bit. Object. Collection filter. If. If something or other. If object dot keys law if object dot keys yagami asakura array equals collection dot filter oh, you recommended filter too you're you're just like the other cool guy down here who did theirs was different, but they did filter this and then they just returned. They did console log for it and it just worked somehow, supposedly. I didn't actually run it, but they're using some log dash thing. I don't know what that is. So it weirded me out. I wanted to try it, but I wasn't too sure. But I trust you, Yagami. So we're gonna we're gonna play by your rules. Hell yeah. Let's do that. Let's get our filter on. So filter stuff. value and index function value dot index yeah if value dot last so clever if clear out this noise value dot last one two S equals source last source dot last fascinating oh need a parenthesis so there's this and then we can clear out the noise before again we're only permitted to change the code below this line and above this line this is all of our noise that we concocted so far um we did get things to appear here in the console uh, briefly, but then change stuff, and then it turned sad and angry, and yeah, well, we all know how that ends up. Anyways, continuing on, if statement. Uh, B -d 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 return value. Yeah, return value. Return value. Boom. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Try that. You don't need the index though, and remove the for loops. The index, the index. This guy, this index, that index should go to hell. I was just following your handy, uh, what you might call it. Answer you provided. The for loop can can die. The for loop is clearly on the chopping block. Yes, this. Absolutely unneeded at this point. 
this though. You say get rid of index. Fascinating. Array equals collection other uh question though. I'm curious what happens when I run it with index. Nothing per se. Value. They dot last and source dot last. So last, uh, Langley, uh, what do you think last does? Last is checking from my understanding the last of the array. So it is on the hunt. So in this, one, two, three, and those three make up collection. It is hunting the last one based off sources, last one, and the source is that second parameter. So here it would be last capulet or a1 or a1b2, uh, so forth, and stuff and such. So we need to make it the array that should I push it? Oh, last will use last, not last in the array. Ah, no? Aren't I crazy? Uh, you do equal. Uh, okay, well, yeah, no, no, I, I saw your equal beforehand. I didn't know if I needed to make it. Since I wasn't, I didn't know if you guys were able to. It's the, you know, full screen and the stream and stuff. I know it's hard to see. I didn't know if the commented out lines were clearly legible, that I was only able to change code between these lines. Free Code Camp has kind of locked us in between these comments to only t uh, tinker with. So I didn't know if making it array equals all of this noise was going to throw off the fact that array was indeed an empty array to start with. I figured I was going to need to do, instead of array equals, do array dot push value, since they already had the empty array set up. That's what I was thinking. Wasn't just trying to avoid your, your handy answer, but that's all. In the end, it probably doesn't matter too much. Again, I'm sure there are many ways to skin this cat, but that's just what was going through my, my beginner mind, if you will. So we will go ahead and do array equals so forth and stuff and such. And uh, run that. Aha, look at that. Tons of fun. Pretty cool. So I wonder what is, oh, oh, bad Steven. I should change, don't mind me, don't mind me. I'm going to copy this briefly. Copy, copy, copy. Reset, clear. Paste. There's that. All right, beautiful. Nice, okay. Table. Last Capulet, see yours returns this. This is exactly what we were talking about. The first time we ran our code, which was different, we only got the inner curly braces. We couldn't land the outer brackets. I was right. I mean, I was off my code because obviously I didn't get the brackets to appear, but this does make them appear which is good times. Fascinating. Who would have known? Now, what else were we looking for? We were also looking for the following. 
making these work as well. Uh, you got me. Well, I believe it's always going to return an array. Yes, that is true. We are locked into always returning an array, so... Again, the other, I'm sure, hopefully, it would still work. We can try array.push, although probably unnecessary and unlikely, but run that. Ta-da, same song and dance. Same thing. Uh, Langley UK 1, filter returns an array. 2, the callback within filter needs to return a boolean if it returns true it will insert the value into the array filter returned even if you don't assign it hmm okay okay so hold on hold on one filter returns an array filter will return an array. Two, the callback within filter needs to return a boolean. If it returns true, if blah is equal to blah, it will insert, it will shove the value into the array filter return. So I need to double up. Um, even if you don't assign it, you can even do return collection.filter function value index if value.last equals source return value. Index Yeah, that's a thing Filter return so Would that return before the if statement Or is that wrong that I want to return that's crazy talk. I don't want to return anything just yet. Don't use the dot last. I know it works in the first examples, but it won't complete the rest of the test unless you just want a working example. No, no, I'm trying to complete the whole activity. Uh, so that would include the bottom two, ideally. And the same solution for all of them would be preferred. Uh, so... One, filter returns an array, yes, and two, callback within filter needs return a boolean. Should I just ditch the last portion? No need for the return. What if I just have last and source? Death, death, bad Steven, bad Steven. So these were still very similar to what we were ending up with filter function if object keys source every function k this was the path we were going down previously and it checks that source has the property and that item which we can update item is basically the array that we'll be returning array has the property and source 
also is equivalent to that. So I think this is pretty damn close to what we're looking for. At least I think it is. So we'll continue down this path. We will only need a value. In the meantime, we can keep our if statement. But instead, we'll do object keys, and instead of src for source, we'll spell out the whole damn thing. Objects, plural, singular, object dot keys. What a great question. Uh, object, singular, plural, source dot every function source dot every function clever solution curly braces there's this Don't mind me, don't mind me. La da 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 Function stuff with an if statement. Yeah, yeah, things things are out of place. Things are out of place. We are missing, what, is that a thing? An if? Something seems wildly wrong here. That has that's one function. Then we have her if. Oh, it was that. Is that what's going on? Sweet baby Jesus, why is it so broken? Holy sack of death. What, does there need to be a... I am so lost. Expected to match, instead saw a thing. What the hell is going on here? Missing the parentheses. Oh, Kevin. You're so right. You're missing the parentheses, which I think is what we know semicolon on the end. Fascinating. Thank you, good sir. You saved us all kinds of confusion. So, functiony goodness. This, I guess, drops down somewhere. We're just trying to piece together our statement. Function k, return, so forth. Huh, what do you know? No semicolon. That's really weird. I wonder why there's no semicolon in that instance. Does that, does that not bother anyone else? Kevin, if object keys dot source every function blankety blankety blank for your code. Semicolons are optional. Wow. Huh. Never would have known. I, I would have been trying to shove that semicolon on there. I thought the semicolon was mandatory. Not gonna lie. Living in a mandatory semicolon universe for the last 259 days. Mind blown. Uh, Felix Shy. 
to, uh, day 259. Keep going. Yeah, Donka, thank you. Also, thank you for stopping by. We, we're going to do our best to keep on going. Uh, is that your dog in the background? Let's let's check and see. OBS. Where? Oh, are you talking about the tiniest... That thing back there? That that white spot of fur? No, that's that's little kitty. She's she's a full time napper. That's what that's her job. So that's her little ear in the corner. Just passed out. Alright. Dee 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 dee. What are we looking for? Back out of OBS. Back changing code at hand. Okay, so. Kevin was right. Kevin was right. Function. Do we want to do K or do we want to do value? We can do K. Should we do I? Let's do K. K is a good generic variable. Plus, it's the same as in their example, which I think is totally reasonable. Uh, curly brace nonsense. That is our next step. Let's drop that down. Drop in the curliness. Yeah. Get your curly on. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, continuing on. Something about something. If. This is where all the and statements come into play. Okay. Success is out there. We we are going to be able to pull this off. I know we will be able to. I wonder if we actually need return item. Do we want return item? Instead of return item, we're going to have return... No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. New array. We're going to be pushing to array here. So instead of return, we're going to need to have array.push for item. I think that'll be okay. I think that'll be fine. Okay. Uh, Kevin. Object keys will return all keys from the given object. So when you're calling the every function, the function will take each key, which I think is what we want. Maybe, maybe it's not what we want, but I'm hopeful that is what we want. It seems like what we're looking for. The trick now is to set up the filters. Return source has own property K. Return source dot has own property K and blah item has own property K. Oh, function filter. So instead of item, we want value. That's what we're doing. Value has own property K. Right, 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 right. Value. So here is value dot has own property K. And K totally works. As well as and followed by last but not least source k in brackets equivalent to value k source k three equal signs value k 
source K. Un, deux, trois. Value K. And that really doesn't get a semicolon. No, that does get a semicolon. Yeah, that makes sense. Then all of this goes here, pushing stuff. God, I hope that's okay. It doesn't feel great, but I think that's as good as we're going to get. Boom. Nothing but net. Let's go ahead and revel at the code once more. Uh, so, from the top, what is in a name? We've got collection and source. We've got our whole collection followed by our source. There's multiple parts to our collection array, or multiple objects in our collection collection array we've got one romeo last montague continues on first null and the third bit tibble capulet now we're hunting for the one that has the last and capulet in it so we're returning that last object of the first array so that was the goal and we succeeded. Same song and dance for the rest of the, the examples. So we've got, yet again, we were only allowed to change code below this line and above this line. This is this is our universe where we get to play. So we did collection.filter, function value, if object.keysource.every function k, we will return source dot has own property k and value dot has own property k and a third one source k is equivalent to value k if all that checks out then we do array dot push value all that dumps up here and then we are returning that ta-da and that gives us our beautiful answer down below way cool uh, dee -dee 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 -dee. <laughs> uh, Langley, uh, I just want to illustrate add array equals to the start of line six and remove line 10. Array equals to the start of line six, remove line 10. Array equals destroy line 10 we can comment uh do, 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 do. remove line 10 fix uh the parentheses on line 9 as well yeah right the parentheses stuff is weird right did we need we do need more. Hold on. Why? There's a lack of... D -d -d -d. No, no, no. I'm, I broke something. Hold on. Did we... Something seems off about that. Why does that make everything happy? Uh, fix the parentheses on line 9. Kevin, uh, could skip the array altogether and return the value from collection filter. Could. True. If you remove, uh, array altogether, you could just do return collection filter. Yeah, I just want to continue using the defined array that was part of the source code. Uh, you don't even need the if at 7. Replace it with return. Huh. Really? I could just do return instead of if? 
and it would still fly. I find that fascinating. So what bits, hold on, so, because, again, I need to get the info to array, which we're making array equal that, so all of this noise, and you're saying, blah, There we go. Unreachable return? What are they talking about? Oh, oh, hold on. Right. There we go. Does that still fly? Hold on. Hold on. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. Backtracking. Stephen's destroying things. It's, it's after midnight and my mind is feeble. It's 1.26 a.m. for Steven. Uh, hold on. Okay. Wait a tick. Wait a tick. Uh, Lainley. Uh, yeah, I just want to continue using the defined array that was part of the source code. Yeah, definitely agreed. That's, that is essential. These bits are necessary. So at least array equals is good. Uh... Continue using define. Uh, you don't even need the if at line 7. Replace it with return. Remember, the callback just needs to return true or false. Interesting. Okay. So this if can just be exchanged for a return. Uh, no, I mean change it to return object keys. Yes, and instead of if and, and free Free it from that. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Kevin, uh, what's in a name? Collection source, return, collection filter, return object keys, every function, return on source code has and, 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 semicolon, closing out, closing out, closing tag, and paste bin goodness. Fair enough. Leaving. Let me click on Z link. Interesting. Okay. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. D D D D D D D D. Return. Object dot keys source function you don't need the push oh there's that and ta-da there we go that's much cleaner right that's what we're looking for Object return blankety blankety blank. I think so. Tons of fun. Okay, let's go back to that. Good, good, good. Okay. She's alive. Trimmed. We've pruned it. Awesome. Awesome. And... Now skip all together. Langley paste bin. Uh skip ah yes. Yeah. Well we still need 
the at least as part of their their source code for the activity is what's in the name variable array equals only change the code below this line so we're sort of trapped in there again either need to push to the array or return or have array equals uh, and then only change code above so this array is part of it regardless Unless I'm still missing something. Now skip array, remove variable array equals blah, and just do return. Oh, yeah, no, I know that it's not needed there. They just wanted it for uh, their, their activity. But that's okay. Here, I guess worst case we could do commenting it out and see how it goes. D to D D to D to D D to D D to D to die return. Perhaps. Hey, cool. Well, that's strange. I wonder why they put that in there then. That's really odd. I get that it still works without it, but usually so many of their activities, both here at Free Code Camp and even at other sites like um, Code Academy, uh, so many of those little, we'll call it quirks, instructional bits, are necessary uh, in their final code for some reason despite not being essential they usually have them but good to know it runs without it that's interesting we learn something we can we can push the limits we should test their instructional stuff more frequently we got so many we got burned so many times before early on, both here at Free Code Camp and especially at Code Academy. They're they're very uh, strict, rigorous when it comes to their instructional stuff. So that's all. Let's go ahead and submit. Um, Kevin, well, it depends on how you want to solve it. This is using declarative approach, which I say is best practice. Noted. All right, so that was day 259. We can close out of all this excess stuff. We can back out to our profile. Uh, we've got search and replace. We may do Code Wars tomorrow. If we don't do Code Wars, we will continue on here at Free Code Camp. We've got challenges, plenty of challenges at both sites to continue tackling. Uh, day 259 comes to an end. We have, hey, what do you know, day 260 on the horizon for tomorrow. As the adventure continues for the year of streaming and learning to code, in the meantime, we are backing out into OBS. Thank you again for anyone and everyone who uh, stopped by to either just hang out and watch the stream or assist with me solving it. Today we had Null 513, Langley UK, uh, Yagami Asakuro, Asakura, yeah, we butcher that every time. Bad Steven. And Kevin Sorbo. No, no. Kevin so so Sor Sorberg. Not Kevin Sorbo. Totally different person. Kevin Soberg. And or is it Kevin S. Goberg? Soberg. It's gotta be Soberg. Silent J. Uh Felix Shy and who else? Did we have any more strays? And Cozy QQ right at the end. Oh, just slipped in there right right before we killed it. Hey Cozy, how you doing? Uh day 260 does come to an end. Look at that. Little kitty still sleeping. Yeah, look at her. That's that's gonna be us in like 45 more seconds. Thank you again to everyone who assisted guiding us. 
to our solution. We would have still been struggling. It would have been brutal. It would have been another three more hours of us crying into our keyboard. But with the help of the awesome programming community here on Twitch, yet again, you guys have saved the day. Good, good times. Back and out of this. Stopping the stream. Are you sure you want to stop the stream? Hell yeah. Kill it.